how an LS resonant converter works, in this video we'll break it down simply. Let's dive in. Every resonant converter consists of three essential components. At the core of these circuits, we have a power source followed by switching devices that control the energy flow. Next, there is the resonant tank circuit, which plays a crucial role in shaping the voltage and current waveforms, ensuring soft switching. The transformer steps up or down the voltage as needed. And finally, the rectifier converts AC to DC for the output stage. The switching stage can be configured in various ways, such as a half bridge or a full bridge topology. The resonant tank itself can take different forms, including series, parallel, or hybrid configurations, each offering unique performance characteristics. Also, different rectifier arrangements can be used in the output stage. Common examples include a center tap rectifier or a full bridge rectifier, depending on the design requirement. This configuration influences efficiency, power density, and overall performance, making the choice of topology a crucial aspect of resonant converter design. Now, by combining these blocks, a resonant converter can be created. For the switch network, a half bridge configuration is chosen, it consists of two switching devices that alternately turn on and off to drive the circuit. For the resonant tank, the LLC topology is selected, which includes a resonant inductor, a resonant capacitor, and a magnetizing inductor. For output rectification, a center tap rectifier is used, utilizing a center tap transformer winding and two diodes to efficiently convert AC to DC. By integrating these elements, a half bridge LLC resonant converter is for one of the most widely used topologies in power electronics. Now, what feature does this topology have that make it suitable for use in power supplies? One of the most important advantages of a resonant converter is soft switching, which allows switching devices to turn on and off with minimal voltage or current stress. This greatly reduces switching losses improved thermal performance and enhanced overall efficiency. For the diodes, operating below the resonant frequency enable zero current switching (ZCS). In this mode, the current naturally falls to zero before switching occurs, eliminating reverse recovery losses. As a result, power dissipation is minimized and magnetizing noise EMI is significantly reduced leading to a more stable and efficient power conversion process. Due to the resonant nature of the circuit, the tank current exhibits a quasi-sinusoidal waveform rather than abrupt square wave transitions. This smooth current flow reduces high frequency harmonics, leading to lower EMI emission and improved power quality. Additionally, the resonant inductor can be integrated into transformer, effectively reducing the number of discrete components. This not only increases power density, but also leads to a more compact and efficient design, making it ideal for modern high-performance power supplies. Now that we've built the LLC resonant converter, let's analyze its operation and drive the relationship between the input and output voltage. The switching signals for the MOSFETs are shown here, operating with a 50% duty cycle. When the high side switch is on, the voltage at the switching node is equal to V in. Conversely, when the low side switch is on, this voltage drops to zero. By performing a Fourier analysis on this waveform, we obtain the following expression as showing in that the DC component of this waveform is Vn divided by 2. Since the waveform is symmetric, it contains only odd harmonics. The DC component is blocked by the resonant capacitor, preventing it from reaching the resonant tank. Also, higher order harmonics are filtered out by the resonant circuit and do not contribute to power transfer. 
This means that only the fundamental harmonics remain, with a peak value of 4 divided by pi multiplied by v in divided by 2. So, instead of modeling the switching network, we can replace it with an equivalent sinusoidal voltage source of this value and analyze the circuit accordingly. The resonant tank is modeled separately with its own impedance characteristics. Now let's examine the output stage. The output current waveform is DC, an average value of IO. Since only the fundamental harmonics is considered, the diode currents follow a sinusoidal pattern, where the average value equals the output current. The peak current of the diode is given by pi divided by 2 multiplied by IO. The second rewinding voltage has a square wave shape oscillating between plus VO and minus VO. According to Fourier analysis, this square wave can be approximated by its fundamental component, whose peak value is 4 divided by pi multiplied by VO. Now that both voltage and current components are identified, we can determine the equivalent output load by using Ohm's law. 8 divided by pi squared multiplied by RO. To reflect this equivalent load to the primary side, we multiply by the square of the turns ratio. Then the output stage can be modeled as a simple resistor of this value. From here, we can derive the final voltage gain equation, which expresses the relationship between input and output voltage. The first term represents voltage division between the load impedance and the resonant tank impedance. The second term accounts for the turn ratio of the transformer. Finally, since the input voltage is sinusoidal and its peak value is used, a pi divided by 4 scaling factor is applied when converting it to an equivalent square wave. By simplifying we obtain the final voltage gain expression, where RA is the equivalent load resistance, QE is the qualifactor, FN is normalized switching frequency, LN is the ratio of the magnetizing inductance to the resonant inductor. The output voltage is highly dependent on this parameter. In the next section, we'll explore how these factors influence performance. Enjoying the content, give a like, subscribe for more power electronics tutorial. Don't miss out. Now that the voltage gain equation is established, let's visualize it by plotting the gain curve. In this relationship, if the values of resonant inductor and capacitor remain constant, increasing the output load decreases the quality factor. As seen in the plot, the voltage gain curve becomes narrower. In other words, as the load varies from open circuit to short circuit, the quality factor increases from zero to a very high value. This causes the peak gain to approach one, and the frequency at which this peak occurs shifts toward the resonant frequency. Another key observation is the effect of reducing the ratio of magnetizing inductance to resonant inductance. When this ratio decreases, the voltage gain curve compresses, meaning that the gain changes more significantly with variations in frequency. This behavior makes the converter more responsive to frequency adjustments. So in resonant converters, the switching frequency acts as the control parameter. By adjusting the switching frequency, the controller regulates the output voltage across different load conditions. Now let's take a closer look at this diagram and the operation of the converter. Here you can see the converter circuit along with the voltage gain curve plotted for a specific set of parameters. The waveform of the switching signals is also shown as well as the resonant current and the magnetizing inductor current. Also, the diode current and the low side switching current are shown. These waveforms correspond to an operation point about the resonant frequency, which is marked on the gain curve. At this point, the MOSFET current is 
negative when turning on, indicating soft switching. However, the diode currents show that the diodes undergo hard switching, leading to reverse recovery losses. As the switching frequency decreases toward the resonant frequency, the current waveforms become more sinusoidal. At the resonance, the diode current reaches zero when turning off, achieving zero current switching for the diodes. On the other hand, the switch waveform indicates that the switch continues to turn on under zero voltage switching condition. Moving away from resonance, it can be observed that the conduction time of the diodes decreases, which increases the RMS current values. At the peak voltage point, soft switching of the MOSFET start to degrade, and beyond this point, the MOSFET current becomes negative during turn off, causing the body diode to conduct. This results in reverse recovery losses when the high side switch turns on, increasing the risk of shoot through and potential MOSFET failure. Then, frequency lower than the peak gain frequency defines the capacitive region where the capacitive reactance exceeds the inductive reactance of resonant tank, while frequencies higher than the peak define the inductive region. Operating in the capacitive region eliminates ZBS, leading to high switching losses. Also, the primary side MOSFET undergo hard switching, causing significant reverse recovery loss due to a slow body diodes. This can result in their shoot through high current spike and increased EMI noise, ultimately leading to potential MOSFET failure. Therefore, the inductive region is the safe operation area where soft switching is maintained. This video is from Noptronics. Check out our other video. See you next time.